Okay. Oh. Sorry, that was um, um, that was something that I could have handled much later, and so damn it, I'm not uh, uh, I'm not answering the phone again. All right. Now, what if we wanted a uh, a ninety five percent confidence interval, but we wanted the lower bound. All right, well, in that case, we would use our same formula, but we would use x bar minus z alpha times sample standard deviation divided by square root of n less than mu. All right, so we say equals x bar minus 1.645, right? You may remember our hideously long discussion of where uh, where we should fix that uh, that five percent for a uh, one-sided uh, confidence bound z alpha. divided by the square root of n, in this case 41. All right, so we get 84.6718, and that is less than or equal to mu. Right, we could do the same thing with a 95% confidence interval upper bound oh all right let's keep this as consistent as we can upper bound right in this case it would be mu is less than or equal to our x bar plus z alpha times sample standard deviation divided by square root of n. All right, so equals x bar plus z alpha 1.645. Again, if you use 1.4, uh, 1.64 or 1.65, that's perfectly fine, times our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. All right, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, so that's when we use the numbers from example 8.3.6. Um, and let me just pause for a moment. 8.3.6 3.6 and rename this sheet. Of course, I will post this updated sheet on Moodle uh, along with the link to the videos. All right, so I go back here. Well, first of all, I'll create a, another sheet 
make it large enough for you to see. And I'll go back to the data sets and go ahead and take the next large sample data set, copy, take that over here, paste, I'll take out this blank line, there we go. All right, so, um, once again, we put in our equation of x bar minus our uh, z alpha divided by 2 uh, times our uh, times our sample standard deviation divided by our square root of n okay to save time I'm going to put mu in now and go ahead and go to math tools All right, so x bar minus z alpha divided by 2 times our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n is less than or equal to mu less than or equal, and of course I'm just going to copy the lower part and change minus to plus for the upper part of my equation. Um, All right, there you go. All right, I made it a little larger so that hopefully you'll see it more easily. Now, what do we need to do that? We need x bar, so x bar equals, and we know that we get that by averaging our sample data so equals average left parenthesis um, right parenthesis uh, so I've highlighted all my numbers and averaged those my sample standard deviation equals equals stdev dot s left parenthesis once again I highlight all my uh, numbers right parenthesis then I need to know what my sample size is n equals equals count Right? That's a function that all I'm going to do is I'm going to count all my numbers here.
Now, you'll notice that the number of, uh, of samples is 39. And the book says we should be over 40. Well, other authorities say over 30 is good. And I'm going to go with those other authorities. All right, so what if we want to get a 99% confidence interval, two-sided? All right, well, I'm going to go here. I'm going to move my equation over a little so there's more correspondence with where things go. All right, so I'm going to say equals my x bar minus what is our number for a two-sided 99% confidence interval. And I am pretty sure it's 2.58, but I'm just going to check the wee tiniest little bit here. So wee tiny, you can't believe it. I'm going to call it 2.58, just like I predicted. All right, so minus 2.58 times standard deviation divided by SQRT left parenthesis, my 39, right parenthesis, less than or equal to mu, less than or equal to equals x bar plus 2.58 times my sample standard deviation divided by square root of 39. All right, so that is telling me that for this data set, for this data set, a 99% confidence interval uh, for a two-sided uh, interval is... Uh, 4.43815, less than or equal to mu, less than or equal to 4.95826. All right, well, that's a pretty narrow interval. I think we can live with that. What about a 99% confidence interval on the lower bound. All right, let me All right. So, as we know, that will be x bar minus z alpha times sample standard deviation divided by square root of n less than or equal to mu. All right, so equals x bar minus, but I have to look up what 99 percent confidence interval
I'm calling it 2.33. So 2.33 is our Z alpha minus, uh, excuse me, times our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, 39 in this case, right parenthesis, is less than or equal to mu. All right, well, fantastic. Of course, we want to do one more but we want to do the 99% confidence interval for the upper bound. All right, well that is going to be mu is less than or equal to x bar plus z alpha times sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. All right, so um, uh, so that is equal to x bar plus 2.33 times uh, sample standard deviation divided by square root of our sample size, in this case 39, right parenthesis. All right, so you can see you can see this is all pretty easy and you may have noticed um, that I really like to use uh, Excel when I am calculating these because it makes things very fast compared to using a calculator. Depending on how much uh, snap you've picked up with Excel. Uh, all right, well, I've got one more super long, uh, a super large sample um, a set of data here. So, I will take that, copy it, Come over here. Oh, no, over here. There we go. Right, and paste it. Uh oh. All right, apparently I, uh, I overstepped. All right, copy, paste. Make this large enough so that you can see it. Once again, I eliminate this um, uh, one uh, row that has nothing in it. All right. So look, we start at A2 with our numbers. <coughs> And it goes down to uh, 41. <coughs> uh, swallowed my tea wrong. Did I get all the numbers? Yes, I did. <coughs> well, I'll go ahead and rename the sheet while I'm here. Uh, uh, example. 
S10. And uh, hmm. uh, so I'm going to go ahead and mark these as confidence interval problems. Uh, so that when you get this uh, when you get this file off of Moodle uh, right because I may reuse these data sets for another problem Uh, all right, so as we know, let's insert an equation. This time, let's do the, uh, uh, the lower bound equation. Uh-oh, that was wrong. Um, all right, accent. There we go. Okay, well, now I got two. All right, so X bar minus, oh, you got to be careful with X bar. It'll try and get away with you. All right, minus our Z, oh wait, lowercase z, alpha, Uh, but since I'm in the neighborhood, oh, well, bloody hell, that didn't work out right. Um, alpha times, put in a fraction, Again, all right, fraction, there we go, sample standard deviation divided by square root of n, going on here. All right, we're almost there. I swear this won't last too much longer. Less than or equal Go back to my Greek letters, uh, find mu, all right, so this is lower confidence bound. All right, and I will go to home. And I will make this much larger. All right, now to make sure uh, I am going to also do 
the upper confidence bound formula All right, so mu less than or equal to x plus our um, z alpha, oh bloody hell. times the fraction of our sample standard deviation divided by square root of n. Okay, and all right, come on. And once again, I'm going to make this much larger. And this is the formula, formula for upper confidence bound. Okay, well. Boy, I got carried away in several ways on this one. Maybe come down a wee little bit. Oh, wrong side. All right, I swear that works. There you go, that looks like about the same size. All right, so let's put this down here. All right, what are we gonna do? Obviously, we're going to calculate our mean and our uh, sample standard deviation and our n. All right, so our x bar, our sample mean, equals, equals a v e r a g e left parenthesis. <coughs> Highlight all these numbers. Write parenthesis. Right, then we're going to calculate our sample standard deviation equals STDEV dot S left parenthesis. Highlight all my numbers again. Right parenthesis, right? So there's our sample standard deviation. Man, that's small. All right, and then n equals, we're just going to equal count left parenthesis. Highlight all the numbers again. Right parenthesis. All right, so our uh, our sample size is forty. All right, so let's do. A um, ninety percent confidence interval, only CI, not CUI. Although I did know a girl whose name that was. All right, so we've got that. 
we are then going to say that is equal to x bar minus z alpha. I want to say it's 1.28 or 1.29, but let me check here. I'm going to call it 1.28 times my sample standard deviation. Huh, you guys have no idea how hard it is for a stutterer like myself to say sample standard deviation. And divide that by the square root of n, right parenthesis, uh, and that is, of course, less than or equal to mu. All right, well, fantastic. Let's do that with the upper confidence bound here, 90%. Confidence interval. Mu is less than or equal to equals x bar plus 1.28 times sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n all right so on our upper bound confidence interval mu is less than or equal to 0 0.62689 uh, okay well I know I feel more informed. I don't know about y'all. Okay, just for grins, let's do the 90% confidence interval that is two-sided. All right, so in this case, I have to know my z alpha divided by 2. Uh, so, I search away. Now I search toward. Uh, and that is going to be 1.6. Four, five. All right, so confidence bound equals x bar minus 1.645 times sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n is less than uh, less than or equal to mu uh, less than or equal to equals x bar minus 1.645 times my sample standard deviation divided by square root of n. Uh, excuse me, I meant x bar plus uh, z alpha divided by 2 times sample standard deviation 
divided by the square root of n. What a relief. All right, so there you go. Um, Uh, as I said, I'm going to uh, post this on. Um, uh, I'm going to post this on Moodle so that you will have this. Let me save it under a unique name. 4-27-2020. Uh, all right, there you go. All right. It can't have escaped your notice that we are getting close to the end of the semester. For the most part, everybody in this class is doing very well. We have a few that aren't doing well, uh, mostly because they haven't been doing their homework. And at this point, my only way of grading you is when you do your homework. The authorities may add an extra week on the end of the semester because of the fact that you got two weeks of spring break. Okay, so, uh, so hang loose. If that is the case, we have uh, three more weeks of school. Otherwise, we have two more weeks of school. Um, we're all going to get through this. Stay home, stay safe, and, um, and do your best to avoid situations where you might get the COVID. Okay, well, when the fields are white with daisies, we'll meet again. Thank you very much for tuning in today, and I'm out. <laughs>